Pastor tells me the kidnapper wants you to deliver the ransom. I'm going to. I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> there has been a kidnap. No question about it. Well, I hope you're not accusing me. We'll have to wait until he lets us out before we can make a move. If he lets us out. Frank Hardy's missing. Did you see him? Make it a good kiss if you can handle it. Right, hey, we go, Anne. Ash. Where have you been? I've been worried about you. You have been? Always glad to help. Particularly when there's a beautiful girl in distress. How can I ever repay you? We'll think of something. Oh, oh excuse me, man. I'm sorry. I was in a hurry here, and we're doing some night shooting, and I didn't want to... Uh... Excuse me, ma'am, but uh, if you don't mind my saying so, you look like you've seen a ghost. It's just really scary in those sound stages at night, you know? Joe, look out! He's been involved in a lot of tough cases, but not as the victim. Mystery of the Hollywood Phantom, Part 2. And now, a few scenes from Part 1 of the Mystery of the Hollywood Phantom. Ah! Uh. Uh, I believe that's my bag. I know, there was a man just trying to break in here. Uh, what seems to be the trouble here? Is she with you? Airport police, juvenile division. I would tell you never to work this airport, Trixie. You're probably all in this together. What is it? Remember that elaborate practical joke you were talking about? Welcome to the club. We're going to take you into a new world, a new world of motion pictures. Come on, Nancy. He's gone. Who's gone? Arlo Weatherly. Excuse me, ma'am, sir. Uh, we're going to be shooting here in just a minute. You'll be right in the way and you could get hurt. Oh, we're sorry. We're just looking for somebody who disappeared from our party. Yeah, right. We're big fans of your show. Oh, thank you very much. You're very kind. Thank you. truck just tried to run over this young lady on the back lot. Did Mr. Hardy leave a message with you? I haven't seen Mr. Hardy since uh, earlier this evening. Mr. Snyder, to the front desk. Mr. Snyder. Boss is gone. The room's wrecked. Wrecked? What are you talking about? About kidnapping, I'd say. What's the note say? Three of your detectives already gone. 500,000 will free them. Don't call the police. Details will follow. Isn't that blood in the medallion? Yes, probably from the broken glass. What are we going to do now? Call the police. Nancy's right. We have no choice. We worked together once. Let's do it again. Let's go. In part two, Frank and Joe Hardy team up with Nancy Drew to solve the mystery of the Hollywood Phantom.
It's all of us at the detectives' convention. They're trying to pick us off one by one. We keep popping up all over. It's incredible. It's insane. I know it. Well, somebody knows all the details of the convention. Like what detectives would be here. They must want the kidnappings to look like the ones in the movie. If it all wasn't so bizarre, I'd be flattered to be included. Why would he leave this around for anybody to see? Well, no one should be in here on weekends. Must be trying to live out some sort of fantasy. Unless he wanted us to see it. Well, no matter how it's dressed up, it's still a simple case of kidnapping. It matters how it's dressed up. You said yourself, insanity, a psychotic mind? <laughs> That's the laughter I was telling you about. Let Jason Fox know what's happening. You sending me out of danger again? I'm asking you to get some help. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm after. This may be hard to explain. You can explain it to the head of security. Mystery of the Hollywood Phantom, Part Two. There's got to be something I can do, Lieutenant. Well, my men are questioning the hotel staff. What you can do is tell me everything you know about the people at this convention. Mr. Fox. Oh, Nancy, sit down, have something. What? Now, where have you been? I had to go back to the studio. The studio? What's the studio got to do with this? Who is she? Well, this is Nancy Drew, one of our detectives. Really? Yes, really. It's all I need on this case. Another detective. This is Lieutenant Astor of the LAPD. He doesn't care much for private detectives. You know, Miss Drew also got a mutilated photograph of herself. You haven't answered my question. The studio is doing a remake of The House on Bracken Moor, stage 24. Don't you remember the story? Eight people are lured to an old house on an English moor. They each receive a photograph of themselves and a threat. They find a circular table with dinner for eight and a large photograph on it with everybody in it, even though they've never met one another. And one by one, the guests start to disappear. It's exactly what's happening to us. It's true. I realize this has all been pretty upsetting for you tonight, but... Uh... Listen to me. I know it seems crazy. It seemed crazy to me at first, too. But that was before I found the photograph on stage 24 with all of us in it. The detectives at the convention. You've got to believe me. Frank and Joe Hardy saw the photograph, too. Well, where are they now? Well, we weren't alone on sound stage 24. And when the person saw us, he ran away. And they're chasing him. All right. Let's get down there. You show me the stage.
looks like there's a soul in here. I know, but this is the way it was earlier. And you're telling me that we're going to find your father and two detectives held prisoner on a sound stage? Yeah, I think so. Now, we clocked this place a little while ago, Bob. There's no one here. Well, you better check around outside. Right. Show us where you found that photograph with yourselves in it. It's down this way. It's right in here. Turn on all the lights. This is impossible. This isn't the same picture I saw before. There's no one else here, Bob. Just like it was Friday afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Astor, LAPD. What did you find here? Nothing, Lieutenant. Nothing that isn't supposed to be here. The picture has been switched. Are you Frank Hardy? Yes, I am. Lieutenant, what is going on here? We don't know for sure yet, but it has nothing to do with the studio. But there has been a kidnapping. No question about it. It uh, remains to be seen. I'm sorry you've been troubled. You better come back with us. My brother hasn't returned yet. Well, where is he? I told you, he chased after a figure that ran out of here. Well, uh, which way did he go? He went towards the back lot. All right, we'll find him. Look, you boys are not allowed on this lot without a pass. Now, the next time you want to come in here, particularly at night, you do it through me, you understand? Frank. Do you have any news? Uh, don't worry, we'll find your father. Did you take a look at Dad's ring? A good look? There was dried blood around the edges of it. That means they tore it off of him. Frank, I've known him for a long time, since he was a lieutenant with the NYPD. Now, he's been involved in a lot of tough cases, some of them kidnapping. But not as the victim. But he's dealt with kidnappers. Has Astor? What I want to know is what's Astor doing? I'm not sure he believes there's been a kidnapping. Even you said detectives sometimes play practical jokes on each other. The ring, the bracelet, all part of a hoax. What's Astor doing, waiting for Dad to come walking back through the front doors of the hotel? He'll have to wait. We all will. We're in the kidnapper's court. And what about the money? $500,000. Who's raising it? Mr. Fox, I'd like to talk to you. Alone. We'll find him, Frank. Well, I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm going to find it myself. Well, wait a minute, Frank. Studio security is out there. They've got two or three cars out there. You're, you're not going to do any better than that. I can try. At least I can try. All right, well, then I'm going with you. I'll do better on my own. Frank, will you stop trying to protect me? Somebody has to. Frank! He thinks I'm stubborn. Huh. $500,000. Oh, we've got to try and raise it. Why, this is the most successful detective group in the world. We're good for it. Not a chance. The FBI will be on the case within 24 hours, and they'll have their own ideas about that. We can't take a chance with their lives. We don't have any choice. Now, there's got to be something you people can tell me. Somebody with a grudge against one of you. Maybe somebody here. He seems to come and go as he pleases in this hotel. I've alerted all the staff to be on the lookout for strangers. Aren't hotels always filled with strangers, Mr. Hargrove? I meant among the staff. I think the staff should be questioned, all of them. That had occurred to me. I'd like to speak to Mr. Fox alone. Wait a minute, I'm a part of this. I'm the only one who even saw the photograph on stage 24. We've already looked into that, Miss Drew. You were imagining things. Now, I don't blame you under the circumstances. I called you in because you received a photograph, but let the police handle this. Now, it may be hard for a detective like yourself to understand, but we sometimes solve cases all by ourselves. I see. Mr. Reinstrom, the front desk. Mr. Mr. Drew. To the front desk, please. When talking about my staff, I hope you weren't suggesting that anyone employed by the hotel could be involved in this matter. 
Well, Mr. Hargrove, you seem to be on top of just about everything around here. I can't imagine anything going on without you knowing about it. <laughs> After all, who was it who arranged that studio tour? The one that Mr. Weatherly disappeared from. Well, I hope you're not accusing me. I'm not accusing anyone. Yet.
sorry. I was in a hurry here, and we're doing some night shooting, and I didn't want to, uh... Excuse me, ma'am, but uh, if you don't mind my saying so, you look like you've seen a ghost. I feel safer now that I've seen you. Well, since you've seen me, I, uh... Wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> you know who I am. I, I saw you this afternoon, right? We talked that You're the girl that attacked... Oh. Hey, look, what's wrong? What happened? Oh... It's just really scary in those sound stages at night, you know? Oh, let me tell you something. They are creepy scary at night, my dear. Those walls talk to you. They're really scary. By the way, did you ever find that uh, fellow you were looking for? No, I didn't, but I will. Mm. Hey, you're not going to believe this. You know, after we talked this afternoon, I decided that's it. No more day playing for me. I'm going to Europe. Going to be a big Western star in Europe. Excuse me, ma'am, but you, uh, you don't see me as a Western star in Europe? Oh, no. I think you'd be great. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, can I, uh, walk you back to your hotel? No, that's okay. I'll, I'll be okay. You sure? Thank you. Bye-bye. Angels, 37 Denver, take two, speed. Charlie, go get Miss Smith. We're ready for Let's go, thanks. Tim would be coming around the corner, right? Now let him get real close, real close, real close, and turn around and give him a big kiss, okay? Can you handle that? Okay, got it. Uh, uh, and remember, it's part of the con, part of the setup, so make it a good kiss if you can handle that. All right, can you do that? Okay, don't I always have? I'll ask Aaron. This will be picture. Okay, right, let's do it. Come on. Roll sound. Hey, hey, wait. Always angels. 37 Exeter. Take one. Speed. You ready, Jack? Hey. All right, here we go. And action. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Cut it, cut it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Any other time I discuss spending the rest of my life with you, but right now, I'm in a hurry. Thanks. Hey, who are you? Why? You mean that wasn't him? I didn't know who was that. Aren't you the kid that jumped the tour this afternoon? I'm looking for my brother. His name is Joe Hardy. Yeah, that's right. We're looking for a kid by the name of Joe Hardy. If we find him, we'll get in touch with you right away. You don't understand. I've got to find... Now, listen, son. I'm not giving you a choice. Now, it's dangerous to wander around this studio late at night. There's been too many break-ins. And the kids they hire for these uh, security guards, they're jumpy. They uh, get too nervous watching all the television they make here. They get trigger-happy in the shadows. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, I catch a drift. Good, come on. Jump in, I'll take you back to the main gate.
so worried about you. You simply disappeared without a word to anyone. We thought you were the next victim. Now, where have you been? I'd like to answer to that question. I don't want you leaving this hotel again without notifying someone. Well, I didn't realize I was a prisoner. Mr. Yes, true. Desk. We are dealing Mr. with a kidnapper. To the front desk. A man who sends mutilated photographs to his victims and appears to come and go like a shadow. We are not dealing with a rational mind. I know that. He tried to get me tonight. What are you talking about? I went back to the studio, to Soundstage 24. We've already been there tonight. There was nothing. Nothing but what the kidnapper wanted you to find. He was expecting me to return there. So he'd arranged his photographs and recreated his fantasy. I found this. It's the negative of Frank's picture. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't bother. He's probably already changed it back by now. I barely got out of there tonight. Did you get a look at him? A good look at him? He was dressed up as Phantom of the Opera. He had this really strange laugh. But he was for real, and you can be sure that he would carry out his threats. Frank Hardy's missing. Did you see him? He hasn't now returned. Returned? From where? Now, where did he go? The front desk, please. He went back to the studio to try and find his brother. Doesn't he know what kind of man we are dealing with? Get me Bob Townsend in studio security right away. And I want to get this down to forensic. I don't suppose there's any chance of a clear print. I picked it up by the corner. You should be able to get a print. But I want to check it out for something else. He was right here, ten minutes ago. We better pick him up. He couldn't have gone far. Let's check the others. Make sure they're still there. makeup and there's also an index fingerprint on the left hand side of the photograph your forensic team ought to be able to isolate it and clarify it well, what do you think we're dealing with nancy the studio makeup man or an actor okay bert get it down to him if you find a print try to match it i got a full studio employee list coming over from town right lieutenant this was just dropped off at the desk no one saw who delivered it. It's addressed to Nancy Drew. Thank you. 
The time has come for retribution. Put the money into a black briefcase. You, Nancy, no one else. Take the studio tour at 10. Why would they want me to deliver the ransom money? Doesn't matter. I'll put a policewoman in your place. We'll be watching. But you can't do that. Lieutenant Astor. This is Bob Townsend. Yes, Bob. Any word on Joe Hardy? No, not a thing. What about Frank Hardy? Well, that's why I called you. One of my men picked him up and took him back to the main gate. Good. Bob, I want a meeting with your full staff in your office in a half hour. We got the drop note. Tomorrow, on the tour, 10 o'clock. Now, this is going to take some organization. We'll be there. Frank? Mm hmm. Security guard found him. Sent him back to the hotel. <sighs> Excuse me. deserve to be scared. You left your door open. I could have been anyone walking in here. The kidnapper. Well, the lock's broken. I've already called maintenance. And where have you been? I've been worried about you. Well, you have been? Yes. Did you find Joe? No. But he left a message. A license number. I think I know who our kidnapper is. Who? The security guard who threw us off the lot today. His name is Brandon. He just tried to do it again to me. I've given all the information to Lieutenant Astor and Bob Townsend. Townsend says that Brandon's only been working for them for six months. But if Joe had to leave a message and he was supposed to meet you here... It makes him victim number four. That means he took my place. The kid never tried to get me tonight. I thought I told you to be careful. I thought I told you I can take care of myself. Astor tells me the kidnapper wants you to deliver the ransom. I'm going to. I wish you wouldn't. Is it all there? Yes, sir. I found this under my door this morning. A policewoman will not do. I want you, Nancy. Now, how could he possibly know? It's a logical step. You're going to have to let me go through with it. I mean, the kidnapper has been one step ahead of you all the way, and if you put somebody in my place, he'll know for sure. All right. But you'll be wired for sound, and we'll be listening to every heartbeat. And there'll be plainclothes detectives on the tour with you. And I'll be there. He'll smell a trap if you are. If we make no moves at all, he certainly will. Very well. It's almost 10. Let's move. I'm coming, too. Now, that's out of the question. I'm not risking any more lives than I have to. It's my father and my brother you're trying to rescue. I'm going to be there with or without your permission. Unless, of course, you're intending to lock me up. Stick close to me.
to our studio tour, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to take you into another world, the make-believe world of motion pictures. Are you ready? Here we go. As well as the fascinating displays and shows we have set up, there may be a number of surprises along the way. Relax, my dear. You can't possibly make contact until you're off the tram. I wouldn't put anything past it. It's the hardest part, isn't it? Mm, waiting? Especially when you don't know what you're waiting for. Brandon's car has been parked here since this morning. I'm worried about her. Oh, Nancy? Seems like a girl with a lot of spirit. It doesn't mean she's any less vulnerable. You think a lot of her, don't you? Yeah, I do. This is Bert. No contact yet. They're returning to the tram now. Sit tight, Bert. Hawkins, they ought to be coming into your area. The tram's coming this way now. How can they make contact in a moving tram? They might as well be real. This is a set. Why can't you just kick your way through this stuff? No, we already tried that. It's too solid. We'll have to wait until he lets us out before we can make a move. Well, that is, if he lets us out. Sorry you found us. I knew this thing would come in handy someday. They're entering the ice tunnel. No contact. All right, pick them up Ladies at the next point. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to undergo a multi-sensory adventure. Can you feel it all queasy and Check it out. You're a very elusive young lady. Sorry we had to rough you up, but we had to get you off of the tram before it went through the warehouse. Quickly. Let's go. you to do that. We better go. Still no radio, Lieutenant. Something must have happened to her. Contact's been made. Converge at Property Warehouse immediately. Come on, come on. Get down. On the floor. Thank you. 
security. Lieutenant, there's some kid here who said he just saw the Phantom take off with the girl from the property warehouse. They're headed for the New York street in the yellow sedan. I see him heading toward the back lot. Okay, we'll cut him off. on the car. Spread them. Lieutenant Astor, LAPD. You're Robert Wagner, aren't you? That's right. You just helped stop a kidnapping, a real one. Always glad to help, particularly when there's a beautiful girl in distress. How can I ever repay you? We'll think of something. I don't believe it. She owes him. What about me? Well, you're not a movie star, kid. But I got some good news for you. Your father, brother, and the others are okay. They weren't hurt? No, they're all right. They're fine. And I guess that just about wraps it up, doesn't it? Not quite. Oh, the young detectives. If I wasn't paling a little under the shadow of your uh, triumph, I'd congratulate you with more fervor. Well, you may not want to congratulate us after you've heard what we have to say. Oh, oh I am intrigued. Uh, go on, go on. Hamilton wasn't in this alone. I know. That uh, security guard, uh, Brandon, yeah, was in it with him. Merely as an accomplice. He was being used by Hamilton. Hamilton was also being used. <laughs> now you have piqued my interest. Used? By whom? By you, Mr. Fox. You engineered this whole plot. Hamilton wasn't smart enough to do it on his own. It's an intricate puzzle. One that needed a master's touch with all the theatricality for which you're famous. Um, go on, go on, please. Hamilton needed to know who was going to be at the convention so he could have pictures of everybody for his photograph. And you provided him with those. He always seemed to be one step ahead of us, and he was. Brandon changed cars this morning because he knew we had his license number. Only someone here, someone on the inside, could have told him that. The kidnapper even knew that a policewoman was being substituted for Nancy. You see, they were one step ahead all the time. <laughs> well, it's an interesting theory, but one I think would be most difficult to prove. Not with you to help us. When I came down from Bronson's room, I said the room had been wrecked. Mr. Hargrove commented on the fact that there was blood on the medallion. You said it was probably from the broken glass. I never said anything about broken glass. The only way someone would have known that is if they'd seen the room themselves. Someone who helped with Bronson's kidnapping? When you tell me that a room has been wrecked, naturally, I assume there might be broken glass lying around. <laughs> Hardly conclusive evidence. And besides, what possible motive could I have? 
Well, I'm sure if we checked your finances, we'd find out that you're deeply in debt. You're bankrupt, Mr. Fox. And that's why you're insisting real ransom money be raised. Well, I think uh, I've heard enough of this fairy tale. You'll excuse me. We did get one piece of physical evidence. Bronson's medallion. In the lobby, when you removed it from the box, you picked it up by the chain. Well, it was sent right out to the forensic lab. And they found a fingerprint on it. They matched it up to one of yours, and they were identical. The only way you could have handled that is if you'd pulled it from his throat during the kidnapping, after he was knocked out. Well, may I uh, congratulate you this time with fervor. You are three of the most remarkable detectives I've ever worked with. Jason had been planning this for months. Hamilton had no idea he hired him. He was going to go to Europe with his share of the proceeds and reactivate his career. Jason was going to keep the major portion of it. It was all very theatrical, meticulously planned. Still can't believe it of the Fox. Although I'm sure he would have carried out every threat. Excuse me. What kind of a cut do you think Brandon was getting? I'm sure he was facing the same fate as the rest of us. Hey, where are you going? I'm going for a drive. I'm sure there's more to Los Angeles in the studios in this hotel, if that's all right with you. No, it isn't. You didn't ask me. Oh, I didn't know I needed to clear it with you first. You didn't ask me if I wanted to go with you. If you'd like to. What I'd like to do is thank you. For what? For saving my life. Well, where are we off to? 